An often asked question is, how many sockets can I put in a kitchen or in the lounge and so on? Often it will be the householders that request a certain number of sockets without being aware of some of the constraints around sockets. So, in this video from Learn Electrics, we'll take a simple look at some factors that might affect your decision on socket numbers. There is no reasonable upper limit on the number of sockets that may be installed in a room, but there are recommendations on the minimum number for safety and convenience. Things that we should consider are the circuit breaker size and type of circuit, which leads to the floor area being served and to the total length of the circuit. That then affects the voltage drop and we need to be aware of the type and size of cable and its installation conditions. Finally, we must consider the size of the room. What is it being used for? How often? By how many persons? And so on. Let's begin with the room sizes as suggested in Table H7 of the On-Site Guide or OSG on page 214. And we are using the brown 18th edition Amendment 2 On-Site Guide for this video. If you haven't already got this book, then I would recommend you get yourself a copy. It is full of very useful information. The on-site guide specifies three sizes of room. Small rooms, up to 12 square metres in area. Medium rooms, between 12 and 25 square metres. And lastly, large rooms that are greater than 25 square metres in floor area. I have suggested some easy sizes to visualise on the slide, but of course, rooms can be any shape, as we all know. I visualise a bedroom as a reference for size for any room that is having sockets installed. A small double bedroom will be between, say, 10 and 12 square metres in floor area. So, visualise and ask yourself, will a standard double bed and wardrobe fit in here and not much else? This will be a small room. It doesn't have to be a bedroom, it can be any room. If you want an accurate number, then by all means, get out the tape measure. But this method works for a quick first impression. Visualising double beds can be used for any room. Everybody has an idea of the size of a double bed and how many they could easily fit in the room. It works for me. I can visualise how big a double bed is. How many beds and wardrobes could I comfortably fit in this room? Just two? Then it's probably a medium-sized room. Looking at breaker sizes, circuit types and floor area next. An important rule to follow with any circuit is the relationship between IN and IB. The fuse or breaker size, IN, must be equal to or greater than the design current, IB. This is the expected load. The design current or load, IB, as we said, must not exceed the nominal rating of the fuse or circuit breaker. We say that IN must be equal to or greater than IB. The fuse must always be able to carry the required loads under fault-free conditions. Final circuits are sometimes designated A1, A2 or A3 as shown below. For a designer, it's easier to write A2 than to write out a radial circuit with a 32 amp breaker wired in 4 square millimeter copper conductors. This is table H2.1 on page 210 of the on-site guide and contains some useful information. For an A1 circuit, a ring circuit, as shown in table H2.1, it tells us what type of circuit it is, breaker or fuse size, the cable size and the maximum floor area that should be served by that circuit. This is the area served by the sockets, not taking into account any route or other rooms that the cable passes through without serving. This is completely different to the circuit length and voltage drop, which is the total length of the cables beginning at the consumer unit and returning to the consumer unit for ring circuits or 
the furthest point of use for radial circuits. What about voltage drop? It's vitally important that the circuit length and circuit load are not so great that insufficient voltage is present at the points of use that the equipment does not function correctly. A quick reminder, a radial circuit cable leaves the consumer unit and goes out to the various points of use and then stops at the end, at the last socket in this case. A ring circuit cable leaves the consumer unit, visits each of the points of use and the cable then returns to the consumer unit forming a ring of sorts around the premises. It goes out and comes back. Which type of circuit it is will affect the voltage drop and ultimately the length of the circuit that can be safely installed. This is the formula for voltage drop in a radial circuit. VD, the actual voltage drop lost in the cables, is equal to the MVAM number from a table for cable sizes, multiplied by the design current and multiplied by the circuit length. This is then divided by 1000 to convert the millivolts into volts. For a ring circuit, it's the same basic formula with one important difference. We divide the answer not by 1000, but by 4 and by 1000, as can be seen here. So why is this? In a ring circuit, current can be shared down each leg. In an evenly loaded socket circuit, half the current can flow down one leg and half down the other. In addition, because the cables return to the consumer unit, then the length is effectively halved. Each leg is only half the total length. And half of a half is a quarter, so the voltage drop will only be a quarter. To calculate this, we divide by four. Half the current, half the distance, the voltage drop will be reduced by four. There are recognised limits to voltage drop based on a percentage of the nominal voltage. For lighting circuits, this is 3% of nominal, and for all other circuits, including socket circuits, it is 5%. In a UK domestic scenario, and a nominal voltage of 230 volts, this equates to a maximum voltage drop of 11.5 volts for the socket circuits. But where is this lost voltage? It's lost in the cables going through the walls, under the floorboards, and so on. It is lost energy that we cannot use, but must pay for. All it is doing is heating up the cables in the walls. We should calculate the limiting voltage drop for the most onerous acceptable conditions for the load and device. The maximum expected load, installation conditions, etc. If, on the day, the actual installation conditions are not the worst that we calculated, the voltage drop will not be as great as presumed. We may have calculated a 32 amp load, when in fact the circuit is only using 20 amps, as an example. Within the on-site guide, there are a number of tables that show the standard voltage drop for different size conductors. Shown here is table F6 on page 177. We are looking at A1 ring circuits here, so we need data on 2.5 square millimetre copper conductors. Find 2.5 on the left, move across to the right, and we have a number, 18. This tells us that a cable with this size conductor for line and neutral will lose 18 millivolts of voltage for every amp that flows through the cable for every metre length. The row below shows that a 4 square millimetre conductor will lose just 11 millivolts per amp per metre. Thicker copper conductor, less voltage drop. We can make a calculation on a ring circuit and make some assumptions. We are using 2.5 twin and earth with a length of 40 metres. We will calculate for a worst case load of 32 amps, the same as the breaker size. Putting the numbers into the calculator, we have an answer of just 5.76 volts for voltage drop, far below the maximum permitted. This is because we have shared the load around the two legs. Looking at an extreme example, just to make the numbers go wrong, 
If the length was 90 metres, our calculation shows a voltage drop of 12.96 volts, which is well over the 11.5 volts permitted. What can we do if we really need a 90 metre length? Take a look at table 7.11 in the on-site guide. The highlighted line shows that we can apply an assumed maximum to the circuit, similar to diversity, if you like, because not all the sockets will be loaded at the same time, all the time. The table tells us to use 26 amps as a maximum load for our voltage drop calculation. Let's plug that into the calculator and see what happens. With a maximum of 26 amps and a 90 meter length, the voltage drop is now 10.53 volts. Move on to an A2 radial circuit now. A 32 amp breaker and 40 meter length. The table on page 210 tells us to use 4 square millimeter conductors and table F6 on page 177 gives us an MVAM number of 11. Putting these into the calculator, we have an answer of just over 14 volts, far too high. But, as we said earlier, the answer is based on the most onerous conditions for the cable and the maximum current based on breaker size. It is unlikely, in practice, to see the maximum readings. We can go back to table 7.11 and find 32 amp radial near the bottom, where we are told we can assume a maximum load of 26 amps, not 32 amps. Recalculating for 26 amps, our voltage drop is now 11.44 volts, just under the maximum limit. Perfect. And so, to the number of sockets that we should install. Table H7 in the on-site guide recommends a minimum number of double socket outlets for the different domestic locations. How many you install is up to you. It is always said that it is better to have too many sockets than too few. What we want to avoid is the householder trailing extension leads around the room. Things to consider will include how often is the room occupied? Is it a main living area? Is it a cooking area? Will there be TVs and entertainment equipment in the room? And where? How many people will occupy the room at the same time? Will the room have office equipment in it? Computers, printers, etc. What about sockets for cleaning equipment, vacuum cleaners, portable equipment such as cooling fans in the summer? Are there special needs that require more sockets? And of course, the list could go on. I've taken a few entries from table H7 and added a few notes to consider. You will notice that a large room has about double the socket outlets of a small room, with a medium room somewhere in between. You or your client may want to increase that amount. Consider televisions, entertainment and technology devices. Does the client need a concentration of sockets in one particular area? Is the dining room used as a homework area, a study or hobby room that needs sockets for tablets and computers, extra lamps, sewing machines, etc.? Will there be televisions and smart devices installed in the bedrooms? As we said a moment ago, there is no reasonable upper limit to the number of sockets in a room. It is better to have too many than too few. Here are some other rooms to consider. A bed sitter will require more sockets than a bedroom as this is a person's living space as well as a sleeping space. In a study or craft room, where are the devices to be located? Where is the desk to be sited? Will the desk block the sockets? Utility rooms can sometimes have just a couple of appliances and sometimes a lot and we need to cater for all. Kitchens are high users of sockets at certain times of the day. In the morning, it is perhaps just the kettle and the toaster, but come the evening, everything can be in use. And consider where the sockets will be installed for ease of use and convenience. Remember 
the socket in a bed sitter with a shower must comply with bathroom zone requirements. Kitchen sockets should be installed at least 100 millimeters above worktops. And is the garage just a space to keep the car at night or will it be a workshop that needs extra sockets? And finally, some clients will ask for socket outlets with built-in integrated USB charging sockets on each socket outlet. Do they really need every one to be like that? Try to be selective with where and how many USB charging points are installed as the USB transformers that are built into the back of each socket outlet will draw a very small current 24-7, even with nothing plugged in. It might not be a significant amount of energy, but someone has to pay for that every quarter. In summary, there is a minimum recommended number of sockets for different size rooms and different usages. There is no reasonable upper limit. The client may have need of extra sockets and it is always better to have too many than too few. Always take into account the floor area served by the sockets and do make a calculation of the voltage drop in the cables feeding the socket circuit. Consider what other uses a room may be put to. Will the dining room be used as a study? Will the bedrooms have TVs and smart devices installed? Will the garage be used as a workshop requiring extra sockets? Remember that a bed sitter may be classed as a room with a shower and the location of sockets will come under Part P of the building regulations. Shower zones will apply to the room and also to the requirements for adequate RCD protection. And kitchens are always an area for careful consideration. At certain times of the day, there may be a high demand on sockets and consider also where to place them for convenience and ease of use. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated and I hope that you found this video useful and informative. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget, you can type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are always adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.